Everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to set up um, an Ethernet cable. These are really useful, and how to do a splicing of a CatFab Kit 6 type cable. Kind of a couple ways I like to do it, some of the tools you're going to need. This is something we really need in our industry nowadays, is to have a low voltage kit. Um, we're going to kind of talk about some of the things I put in my kit, and where you can get some of these parts. So first off, this is for review purposes only. This is for teaching after the fact. Um, I'm not responsible for anything you do improper. This is low voltage, so don't shock yourself, but definitely don't hook it up to live volt, or, you know, high voltage. But just kind of going into some of the parts that you're going to need. Probably um, starting out, you're going to need some kind of a crimping tool. Um, I Ideal makes them and Klein makes them basically which store you shop at the most. If you shop at Lowe's, buy the one from Lowe's, which is the ideal one. If you shop at Home Depot, buy the Klein's. It's just how it is. Um, Amazon sells this tool a little cheaper. These are about 30 bucks. These are about 50 bucks. They will do both the Ethernet cable and your standard home um, phone cable. So if you're still using home phone cable, that's kind of nice it has this if you buy a little cheaper one these guys are 30 bucks they uh have just the ethernet cable we use pretty much ethernet cable so i kind of recommend this one this is a little nicer and i like how it has the lock that pops on the back so a bunch of different versions out there i'm not saying pick one over the other i'm just saying they both uh ideal makes almost the exact same tool as both of these you can like i said if you're at lowe's pick up the lowe's one if you're at home depot pick up the client one now when it comes to these, uh, there's two different versions. There's what they call the pass-through version, which means when you're dealing with your wires, you will actually push them all the way through so they'll actually be sticking out. Makes them really easy to tell and make sure you're doing it right. And then when you put it in the machine, you lock it all the way in and the cutter here, as you close it, trims off the excess, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind, that's going to trim off the excess as, it's, as it needs to be done, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind, that is something you're going to want to, uh, you know, have. I really do like this version with the version that is able to be cut off, okay? So you're going to, and you'll have to buy the version of tips that are designed for that to be the pass-through version. Now this will work on either version, it will work on the pass-through or the non-pass-through, but the non-pass-through just stops all right there and it's a little harder to work with. So crimpers, definitely buy yourself a set of crimpers. Um, Cat5 uh, sheath cable tools, so there's a bunch of different versions out there. This is what you're gonna get a plat. These are the ideal and Klein versions, again, Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, I do like this version a little better. This will do uh, Cat5 and it'll also do coaxial cable, kind of just change out the two little parts there. They also make a version that's for $20 that has both attachments. So when it comes to this guy here, um, this is for taking the sheath off without cutting the wires internally, okay? So picking whichever one you like better, this one you have to actually press down and slide your wire in versus just pinching and putting it on. I do like this version a little better. This one kind of does a little better job though. Uh, having cable strippers is always a good idea. So having a cable set of, um, a set of strippers that's gonna go down to like the 24, 26 gauge wire is really important. This one also has a crimper for doing splicing. So I'm gonna kind of show you that first. So if we're doing splicing, um, we'll kind of show you guys here. So picking something that's able to cut the whole tip off. So we're gonna cut the tip off. It's gonna leave that little area there, that little... This can be used and actually cuts the cable if you don't have the tool to strip it with. I'm a really big fan of kind of getting rid of that guy because I've never really had good luck with that. Go ahead and take in your stripping tool you're going to spin it. I usually do it twice. Take my thumbnail, put it in a little groove, pull off, and it just slides right off. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and we're going to just, we're just going to combine the two greens here. So there's a green and white, a twisted pair. 
If you're working with CTs, remember twisted pairs are very important. So we're just gonna slide our screwdriver, our little mini screwdriver inside the twisted pair. And then if we stick our thumb over the top and pull, we end up with a perfectly stripped, nice uh, straight pair of wires, okay? So that's kind of the trick I would tell everybody. That's kind of like your pro trip and tip of the day here. Now, if we're putting those two together, we're just gonna go ahead and pull the two greens. This is a really important thing if you're doing, let's say solar edge inverters, where you're putting two batteries together. Uh, now this one can hold up to three wires in here. These are the ideal crimping tools or little crimps here. You can find these at Home Depot, Lowe's, everywhere pretty much carries them. You're gonna go ahead and slide it on until you see it come out the back. And you will see that it goes all the way into the tool here. So it's past the crimper, which is dead center in the center here. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then you can either use the tips of your strippers or a pair of channel locks. But this tool is specially designed for that. This is, you know, ideals tool. And piercing those together. Now, you saw that. It's an instant crimp. It does all the crimping inside. It also has a gel to keep it waterproof. There is no reason to strip these wires whatsoever. So if you are just combining two wires together, do not strip them. Just put them in and they will cut them, strip themselves as you put it in there. And like I said, the tool makes it real nice because it puts a perfect crimp on every single time. So if you're, if you're splicing Cat5, definitely the way to go. Now if we're dealing with making um, ethernet cables, which we do a lot in Generac panels, a lot in just uh, having them, it's always a good idea to keep a 100 foot cable on the truck, but sometimes you're gonna to need to be able to connect into a, you know, an ethernet box that is, you know, Wi-Fi box that's 200 feet away. And you're gonna to have to make your own cable. So we keep rolls of this on the truck. So we're gonna go ahead and make up one side. Now, one thing I will tell you is that basically there's two different styles of wiring diagrams. We will be using wiring diagram in America B. So B is the most important one we use. And remember that is to be done in this orientation. So your orange white is gonna go all the way to the left hand side and with your pins up. So facing up towards you, and that's how they should look. Just like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and strip it back. What I like about the version I can strip back is I can strip as much as I want, make it nice and long so it's easy to put it inside and strip off. So I can sit there and go ahead and strip it back quite a little bit. Take my two turns, stick my finger in there and just pull. That's gonna pull it all off. First thing I do is cut away that little piece of stripping cable there. I'm gonna go ahead and take my screwdriver, slide it in, pull out, and I can pull out every single one and straighten them all out. And we're gonna go through each one, pull through each one, and it straightens them all out, and then we'll come back and we'll probably hit it one more time to get the last little bit. So you don't have to untwist them all. That's what I hate is trying to untwist all these wires, it takes forever. So I used to do that all the time when I first started doing this, was just unstrip them all. So then I just take it, and you just take them on your screwdriver. Make sure you got nice round screwdrivers. These are the ideal ones, or the Klein ones, sorry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and orientate them so they will fit into the tool. So we're gonna do orange white, orange. Now why these aren't built this way, I have no idea, but this is what it's gonna be. We're gonna go green white. So there's a, I always say there's green and white in the same one. So we're gonna go green white. Then blue, we're going to go blue white, then green. Once we've got green on there, we're going to go ahead and do um, brown white and brown. So, what we're going to try to do is lay them in the orientation they should be, which again, this green white just jumped out of place. So, once we get them all back in a place like they should be, we can lay them down nice flat in our fingers here. And we wanna get them all nice and straight so they're all lined up. We wanna check it one last time. I'll usually this time go ahead and cut them all straight. And what I really like about the pass-through version is when I put them in, 
they come in here and then I can pull them all the way down to the bottom. Now, if I needed to, if I was gonna do an area where I was gonna make my own cable, I can use these little cable covers by Ideal. They go in there and they actually allow it so it doesn't crimp on here. Now I'm gonna check it one last time to make sure I've got everything in the right place because sometimes when you put them in there, they come in wrong. So I have orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, green. Ooh, there we go. Now we've got a mistake. So we're gonna have to pull it back out and bring that around. So it popped over while we were sitting there. And that's what I really like about this system, about the pass-through system, is just the ability to be able to see it after it's all done. So, and then we go like that, and we're gonna go ahead and check it one more time. Orange, white, orange, blue, or green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, and brown. So everything looks good there. We're gonna go ahead and then put it in our crimping tool. So our crimping tool is here. We're gonna go ahead and orientate it so the little lock is at the very top in the notch. We're gonna push it all the way through. And then we're going to crimp it off and it will cut all the edges off at the same time. Okay, once we've done that, once it, you'll hear it go all the way down tight, you gotta go all the way to the very bottom and then let go, which should. And then probably the most important tool I can tell you to go pick up, these are about 30 bucks, um, is a little tester. So these can be 200 feet away, which is kind of cool. It's gonna put a little battery test in there. So you're gonna plug it into the RJ45 on one side. And then the top of the tool, we're gonna to have the same thing. It will do also phone cables too. So we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. And now we've got it plugged in on both sides. We're gonna go hit and hit the power button. The power button tells us that we have good voltage, that it passed the test. Now it gives us miswired, open and short. Both these are really valuable, especially if you're doing a long run, it allows you to test all those and make sure everything's right. And this could be really good if you're having troubles with a cable that you've ran really long and wanted to make sure that it wasn't shorted out or anything like that. We wanna make sure that's passing. So once we've done that, we know that it is ready to go. And again, this is a Klein tool. I like this one, it's simple. It doesn't do a lot of fancy features or anything. It just checks it. You must have one of these. Uh, they sell these two tools online at Amazon for about 60 bucks, uh, which is a, it's a good deal. Uh, and I had a bunch of these. They seem to be really robust. I've dropped them a hundred times and they seem to really work well. So guys, you do need these tools. If you're going to be starting to do solar in our day and age, we're doing more wiring, um, with the battery situations and more CT wiring that you're going to need equipment like this to do low voltage testing and um, sheath cutting. I don't know how many times I've gone to jobs where people have tried to cut their sheaths with their strippers and they have nicked a wire or whatever that is where it's not getting good communication and it just doesn't work. So guys, really invest in yourself, invest in your tools. And as always, guys, have a great day. Like and share and leave any comments down at the bottom.